It's just been getting crazier each year. I mean, if you just think about it, because everyone, there's always something different. It's just getting more divisive and everything. So it is definitely crazier. That is what we need. Yeah. Certainly uh, doing everything in our part to um, do what we feel is right to keep Trump out of office. Um, uh, four years ago, my wife and I, we live here in Detroit, uh, we uh, became poll workers for the first time and really enjoyed that experience. I uh, was very proud of how Detroit turned out for that election and uh, looking forward for a similar turnout. I'm still undecided right now, I'll be honest with you. I, I gotta, you know, I gotta hope maybe he's gonna have a change of attitude or something to show that he is actually invested in pushing past the identity politics of coming for, oh, Trump's the bad guy that's coming to destroy everything, but I mean, we'll see, you know. Well, out of the two, Biden is the better, but no one really likes Biden, but would prefer him over a Republican or Trump, especially. Do you think people will, will vote? Not vote. They definitely vote. It's especially what in my community people find voting very important. So. You guys. I feel it's important for us to be a part of that process. That the first time we'd ever done it was in uh, the 2020 election, uh, and, and both my wife and I did it. We got different locations in the city, and, and our experience was fantastic. Um, and then having to take the results over to the to the Ford Field, I think it was. Uh, it was just a great experience. Um, uh, we were very happy the way the election turned out, and uh, very proud of Detroit for turning up. Uh, we had no issues. Uh, it was all in all a really wonderful experience for us to be on the front lines of democracy. Is what it felt like at the time, and we signed up to do it again in 24. As far as Michigan is concerned, you know, uh, Biden's pouring a lot of money into uh, Detroit right now. Like, he's been visiting us a lot right now. So I think that's cool. But, I mean, either way, I, I, it doesn't make much of a difference to me. Former U.S. President Donald Trump cruised to another primary win on Saturday, easily beating lone rival Nikki Haley in her home state of South Carolina. He had close to 60 percent of the vote, with 99 percent of expected ballots tallied, according to pollster Edison Research. There's never been a spirit like this, and I just want to say that I have never seen the Republican Party so unified as it is right now. Never been like this. It was the Republicans' fifth nominating contest in a campaign Trump has dominated from the outset, despite facing dozens of criminal charges. The big win will bolster calls from Trump's allies that his last standing rival, Haley, should drop out of the race. But the former South Carolina governor appeared to have outperformed expectations, with Trump's 20 percentage point margin smaller than opinion polls had earlier projected. My whole goal for running is because you have a majority of Americans who are saying they don't want Donald Trump and they don't want Joe Biden. So as long as you have a majority of Americans saying, please give us a choice, I'm going to continue to fight. I am not going anywhere. Haley continued to insist she would fight on, at least through Super Tuesday in March, when Republicans in 15 states and one U.S. territory will cast ballots. And we're headed 
to the Super Tuesday states throughout all of next week. However, Trump has already been campaigning as though he was the official GOP presidential candidate as he focused his attacks on Democratic incumbent Joe Biden. Before flying to South Carolina to watch ballot returns on Saturday, Trump did not mention Haley once as he addressed a gathering of conservative activists near Washington, mocking Biden and again claiming political persecution. I stand before you today not only as your past and hopefully future president, but as a proud political dissident, I am a dissident. With a massive lead in national opinion polls, Trump could effectively clinch the nomination by mid-March if he continues to win primaries at the same pace, just in time for his first criminal trial, scheduled to begin on March 25th in New York City. Nearly a third of those who voted in South Carolina's Republican primary said Trump would not be fit for the presidency if he was convicted of a crime, according to an exit poll conducted on Saturday by Edison. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! Free, free, free Palestine! 130 plus days. I think I've given over 30, 40 plus speeches. We cannot, we have to boycott. This is a real thing. It's not, it's not haram boycott, right? And what Joe Biden expected is that we would forget. And instead, we have started an entire movement called Vote Uncommitted to prove to him that you cannot kill our people and think that we will forget. So please go and vote uncommitted. And I'm reminding you that the uncommitted vote is a protest vote. That Michigan is a pro-Palestine state. That Michigan is anti-war. I want to drop a reminder here for everybody that you also have 435 House seats that are up for re-election this, this year. Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Shame on you, Biden! Shame on you, Biden! Shame on you, Biden! Committed and please demand a ceasefire now. 